I think public transportation, replacing private automobiles is important. Uh, refitting uh, uh, buildings so that they're much more efficient in heating and in air conditioning. Those are critical questions. Having more green space, planting more plants and gardens and uh, parks can help uh, absorb carbon dioxide. Uh, those are some of the things cities can do. I think it's possible to reduce carbon emissions sufficiently to keep temperature from rising uh, to unacceptable levels and for economic growth to continue. But it requires redesigning the production of energy and a, and a, a good deal of planning. It requires also in particular uh, reducing the profitability of fossil fuel companies which depend upon producing carbon dioxide for their profits the way they're presently constituted or currently constituted and the fossil fuel companies are going to fight to the death against any kind of any kind of efforts to reduce their profits right now politicians are not willing to fight the fossil fuel companies sufficiently in many countries and so we're not going to make progress on this until uh, they're willing to do so I think there are various ways cooperation can be organized, but it requires the political will of different countries to cooperate with other countries in the sense of cutting back emissions. Everybody is going to have to cut back emissions to some extent, some countries more than others, but it's possible to do this in a way that will not uh, impede uh, economic growth, that economic growth will continue, perhaps at a slower rate, in some places than it has in the past, but economic growth can continue to be positive. I'm not optimistic as long as Trump is the President of the United States because I think the United States is a critical player. It's the second largest emitter uh, after China and uh, American, American leadership in getting other nations to cooperate to reduce uh, emissions is absolutely necessary. So I'm very pessimistic as long as Trump is President. I don't think the kind of progress will be made that's necessary. So the primary responsibility is for American voters to uh, replace Trump with a more cooperative president in 2020, uh, or perhaps before then. Uh, but other countries, I think, have to start thinking about how they can put pressure on the United States to be more cooperative. Other countries have thus far uh, reacted quite passively to the to the withdrawal of the United States from the Paris uh, agreements that Trump has announced. I don't think, uh, some people say that we can organize su a successful reduction in emissions on a voluntary uh, decentralized uh, way around the world. I'm myself not, uh, not optimistic that this could happen. I think co explicit cooperation is going to be necessary in setting global uh, limits on emissions and also on organizing uh, something like a cap-and-trade system to make it possible to implement uh, a reduction in emissions by individual firms and, and countries. It's very hard to say. Europe has had uh, a number of very bad heat waves in the last 15 years. Uh, it's had droughts uh, and that will only get worse as the temperatures increase. Uh, uh, so I think that as these uh, climate catastrophes occur, uh, that uh, and with their water problems this summer, there was a problem with certain rivers being at very low levels. I think uh, as those things occur, I think the population of Europe will become more active politically in demanding that their governments uh, take more action. Mm -hmm.